All right, here's a lesson on solving literal equations. Little literal equations are typically formulas, and I have to admit some in this lesson I just made up, and others are actual formulas. When you're given an equation to solve, um, they will give you the equation, and then they will tell you which variable they want you to solve for. Now remember, solving for a variable means we isolate that variable. We get it all alone on one side of the equation and move everything else to the other side using properties of algebra. And then we want to have it in the simplest form possible. So this is asking us to solve this equation for b. So here's our variable b. We want it to be totally alone. So we need to move everything else. And we look at it the same way we would as a regular equation with numbers. Um, it makes it a little difficult sometimes because it's not quite the same as the way you're used to looking at it. So what would we do if we wanted to get b alone? We need to get rid of that one-third. So what's the opposite of one-third or dividing by three? It's multiplying by three. If I multiply both sides of the equation by three, I've done everything perfectly legal because I did it on both sides. And three times one-third just gives me a one there. So there's a good first step. So now I have 3v equals capital B times h. Again, I'm trying to get the b all by itself. What's happening to it right now? It's being multiplied by an h. So we want to do the opposite of multiplying by an h so that we can get that h to the other side. The opposite of multiplying by h is to divide by h. So we go ahead and divide both sides by h. And we have the solution b is equal to 3v divided by h. Have we isolated b all by itself? Yes, we have. Have we followed rules of algebra? Yes, we have. So this would be our solution. b is equal to 3v divided by h. Now there are some tricks that go along with these. So it's good to see several examples. We're going to have six examples here, so stick with me. There may be some things you find helpful. Here we have a equals 1 half times a plus b times h, which is the formula for uh, the area of a trapezoid. Um, we're asked to I solve for a, so we want to get this a all by itself. So we need to move everything else to the other side that is not essential here. So we have this 1 half. How are we going to remove a 1 half? We're going to multiply both sides by 2. That will give us 2 times 1 half is 1 over here. So now we have 2a on the left hand side equals, now we have a plus b times h. We also need to remove that h. Notice it's multiplied by the a plus b. So what's the opposite of multiplication? Division, of course. So we divide both sides by h. Since the a plus b was in parentheses, that's considered one term. So we're OK to do that. So now we have 2a over h is equal to a plus b. Remember, we're trying to get a all by itself. Right now, the problem is it has a plus b. So to remove that plus b, we do the opposite of adding b is to subtract b. So we're going to subtract b from both sides which is not a like term with 2a over h, so we just write them together. 2a over h minus b is equal to a. We have isolated the a, we followed rules of algebra and properties, and we're good to go. Our solution, a equals 2 times capital A over h minus b. Right. This one has a trick that's good to know. Here we have p equals ad plus d, or ask to solve for d. Now notice our problem when isolating d is that there's d in two different terms. So if we move one term to the other side, we have it split up. Um, if we try to divide by a, we would have to divide everything by a. Okay, And then we have a's mixed with d's anyways, which also doesn't work. So here's what you do. When the variable you're trying to isolate is located in more than one place, you get it on the same side, which we have already, and then you use factoring, or kind of like inverse um, distributing. Notice both of these terms have a d. So I can factor out a d 
from both terms. If I pull out a D, I have A left in the first term plus 1. You can't just leave that blank because when we distribute D back through, we want it to be the same thing. And if I did, I'd have D A A D plus D. So I pull the D out. Now what do I have to do? Well, we were wanting to get D by itself, and right now the problem is that it's multiplied by the quantity A plus 1. Well, how do we get rid of something as being multiplied by? We do the opposite and we divide. So I'm going to divide both sides by A plus 1. Okay, we cancel the A plus 1s, and here we have it. P over A plus 1 is equal to D. We have solved for D for this equation. So again, that's one good trick to know. The variable you're solving for is in more than one place. Make sure they're on the same side, and then factor that term out. All right, here we have V equals 1 third pi R squared H, and we are asked to solve for R. So we're wanting to get the R completely alone. So let's start moving things. Here we have a 1 third, which we've gone over. To get rid of that, we're going to multiply by 3. We have 3V equals pi R squared H. We don't want the pi and the H to be there. They are multiplied by the R squared. So to remove them, we do the opposite and divide by pi and H. You could do that at the same time if you choose to. So now we have 3V over pi H is equal to R squared. Is our R, square, is our R isolated? It's not because it has that squared there. Okay, well, how do you get rid of a squared? You take the square root. And remember how I said you always put plus or minus unless it doesn't make sense to do that? R stands for radius. You can't have a negative radius. So we're just going to use the positive answer here and not the plus and the minus answer. So here is our solution. R is equal to the square root of 3V over pi H. We have solved for R. There's another trick to get rid of squares if you need to isolate that variable. You can take the square root of both sides. Here's one that looks pretty crazy. We've got all kinds of parentheses. We're asked to solve for y. So let's find y here. It is right here buried in these parentheses. Let's slowly unbury it. So notice my first problem here is that I have this multiplied by x over 4. I need that to be moved to the other side. It's multiplied by this term in parentheses. So to remove that, do you remember how when you're solving you get rid of a fraction? Well, I'll tell you, we multiply by the reciprocal. It's like you're multiplying by 4 and dividing by x. Multiplying by reciprocal helps us out there. So now I have 4 times L over x equals 2y plus the quantity p plus 5 times m. And keep in mind, we're solving for y here. So this entire term at the end, the p plus 5 times m, I don't need that there. It doesn't have any y's in it. It's added to the 2y. So to move it to the opposite side, I do the opposite, and I subtract it from both sides. Okay, what does that give me? It gives me 4L over x minus p plus 5 quantity times m equals what's left on the right-hand side, just a 2y. Again, we're trying to isolate the y. All we have left that's messing us up there is it's multiplied by 2. So I'm going to divide by 2. Now, when you divide by 2, you have to divide everything by 2, Okay, each individual term. So we end up with 4L over 2x is how we would write that, minus p plus 5 quantity in parentheses m divided by 2 is equal to y. And we have now solved for y. So just slowly go through the steps that we did to solve an equation and unbury that term you're looking for if you have sets of parentheses locking things together. Hey, this last one is perhaps the most kind of the most abstract. 
kind, and it's because of these fractions they cause some problems. So I'm going to go through how we would do this and make sure we had a simplified answer. We are asked to solve this equation for x. Okay, so first we notice, well, x is in the denominator of a fraction, which is not okay. So what we want to do is remove it from the denominator. To do that, we're going to multiply both sides by the denominator to eliminate that. Remember, that was one of our tricks for solving the equation when you have a fraction. So we take that entire denominator, 1 over x minus 2 over y, and multiply it by both sides. Now we have, I'm going to go right here, try to write small enough so I can fit this whole problem because it takes lots of steps. t times 1 over x minus 2y is equal to 1. Again, I'm, I'm trying to solve for x, so I need to remove the parentheses because the x is stuck inside those parentheses. I'm going to go ahead and multiply by t. That gives me t over x minus 2t over y equals 1. Again, I'm trying to isolate the x. I know, notice that it is added to this 2t over y, or excuse me, subtracted, so I'm going to add 2t over y to both sides so that that is not in the way. Now I have t over x is equal to 1 plus 2t over y. Now, problem, my x is in the denominator. How am I going to get it out? Well, there's a couple of methods to go about this, but what I'm going to do is I am going to go ahead and take this right-hand side and write it as a single fraction. So I need a common denominator. My common denominator would need to be y, okay? So if I want y in the denominator for this 1, I take this 1 over 1. I multiply the numerator and denominator by y, which is perfectly legal. So now we have y over y minus 2t over y. We can combine the numerators, because now we have a common denominator. We're almost there. We'd have y minus 2t all over y. Now, one thing you can do when you have a fraction, you can do a fraction, is you can invert the right and the left-hand sides, and that's perfectly OK. So to get the x out of the denominator, that's what I'm going to do, is I'm going to do the reciprocal on both sides. So I'll have x over t equals y over y minus 2t. And then there are lots of tricks that just kind of help, but there's some pretty complex questions on that assignment that require some of this trickery. Okay. Uh, last thing, I have x divided by t. So how am I going to get rid of the t? The opposite of dividing is multiplying. So I multiply both sides by t. My final answer, I'm going to write it up here at the top, is x equals y times t over y minus 2t. So that was a little more complex of a problem. If you want to go back through the steps, that might be a good idea. But again, on the assignment, there are a couple of pretty complex ones that maybe these, going through these tricks will help with.